Hi everyone, I'm Drew. And I'm Rosie. I'm the creative director of Time for Kids. And my mom's the editor in chief. Ever since I was little, Drew's been teaching me how to draw all of my favorite things. We figured since a lot of you are home right now, we could all learn to draw together. You can share your drawings with us online and tell us what you want to learn to draw. We really want to thank our creativity partner, Adobe, for making this all possible. This is Draw with Drew. And Rosie. Welcome back, and thanks to everyone who sent us their artwork for Teacher Appreciation Week. Wow, those are great. Yeah, it's so good, right? Uh -huh. So Rosie, we got an email this week from Ava, and she said she would like to learn how to draw beach landscapes. So what if we did landscapes this week? Because I know everyone's kind of getting a little antsy and they can't go anywhere. So you can draw all the places you can't visit right now, or you can just find like your favorite view from where, wherever you are, and you can draw looking out the window at that view. So that gives the people a lot of options, right? That sounds really fun, yeah. So, landscape painting. It's kind of like one of those things that all artists do. Some yeah. artists try to capture nature's incredible beauty. Some are inspired by impressive architecture. Sunsets are always a fun thing. So let's find something that inspires us and let's try and recreate it. How about that? Yeah. All right, what's your idea? I'm gonna draw one of my favorite ponds. It's called Bull Pond. And I'm gonna draw a view of the dock and the water. Let me see the picture, Rosie. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh, that's perfect. See those beautiful mountains and the clouds and the water? There's a lot to work with there. Yes. All right, we're gonna start drawing. Let's think a little bit about what exactly- What? What are you gonna draw? Oh, good question. What am I gonna draw? I'll draw the view off my balcony. I live in Brooklyn, so- A lot of buildings, right? A lot of buildings, but we've had really cool sunsets and I've been taking pictures of sunsets, so maybe I'll draw one of the sunsets. I love sunsets. <laughs> so cool how the time of day will change the color and the light completely. You know, every time the sun's coming from a different angle, suddenly your view will be entirely different. So everyone drawing with us at home, pick your favorite time of day and let's draw something based on that. Yes. All right, everybody at home, gather up all your materials, paper and pencils. When you're doing landscapes, paint's a good thing to work with, something with a lot of color. What else should they grab? Maybe a picture? Yeah, colored paper, any other kinds of mixed media that you guys want to add. Gather up all your art materials and let's get started. Here's a good tip for everybody at home. If you're gonna use some paint, it's always a good idea to put down some poster or like newspaper is a good thing to put down. Don't paint your mom's laptop. Oh, what about my dad's? Dad's is fine, just don't do it to your mom's. <laughs> I'm gonna put some paint onto mine, that's for sure. You can't do that with the daily fresco, can you? Yeah, it's really cool. Here's my other tip. Once you settle on your favorite view, spend some time thinking about what you like about it, and let's try and incorporate some of that into your art. You want to let your art express what you love about this particular view. So this pond means something to you because you have memories there. So what you're trying to do is capture those memories, you know? Yes. So here's a great tip for you, Rosie, and for all you kids at home. Block in exactly what you're doing on your piece of paper so that you know how much space you have. Do you know what composition is? Uh -uh. It's an art term, but basically it's kind of like how things are laying out on the page. So how much sky do you want in your picture? That much. All right, so make a decision based on that. Like you want the sky to be this part of it, and you want the dock to be this part, and you want the water to be this part. I want to focus on clouds. So I made the buildings down at the bottom so that I have a lot of space for clouds, see? Yeah. We haven't ever talked about color, have we? I don't think so. All right, pop quiz. If you mix blue and yellow, what color does that make? Green. See, you know this stuff. Do you want a harder question? Yes. What's the complementary color of yellow? Ooh, 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 I think I know this, I think I know Do this. Do you? Blue! No, I no, 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 Green. Purple? Yeah, exactly. Okay, give me another. What's the complementary color of blue? Orange. Nice. I just wanted to say orange. Yeah, that's a fun one, right? What rhymes with orange? Nothing. Orange. Oh, orange does, right? I forget about orange. How could you forget, Drew? <laughs> blue and orange makes orange, right? True, true, true. But you know how you make a browner blue? You add orange, right? Yeah, exactly. That's where those complementary colors come in handy. So that's called breaking color. 
what you're doing is you're taking like a pure blue and you can kind of tone down the blue by adding orange to your blue. It seems weird to think about adding orange to like the color of water, but it's just an easy way to add realism to use complementary colors in that way. Cool. Okay. Can I see yours? Yeah. I am blocking in all the buildings that I see outside my apartment. Nice. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I have to hate Just breathe, Riley. <laughs> I'm adding this little squishy ball, like someone throws it, and then you have to jump out and then catch it, and you can squeeze it, it's really fun. Okay, so this is a game that you play on the dock, right? Yes. That's good. Actually, for everyone drawing with us at home, here's another tip. Whether you're looking at a photo, or if you're just looking out your window, details make the drawing. Yes, 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 yes. I decided to add a picture of me looking out at Gull Pond. That's nice, that's perfect. Should we check in with everyone at home and see how they're doing? Yes. I drew and Rosie. Today I'll be drawing a landscape. The reason I'm drawing this landscape is because it reminds me of summer. Hi Drew and Rosie. I want to draw this landscape because it reminds me of my grandparents' house and I really wish I could be there right now. This landscape, it's in Maryland where we used to live and it's just about this time of year. There was a beautiful big cherry tree on top of the hill and the flowers were so pretty. So I was just kind of trying to recreate that memory. I'm using colored pencils because they're the easiest for me. I chose watercolors because I really like how I can blend. You can make new colors, so there's a vast variety of things that I can paint. I chose colors that really made me happy, so when I look at the picture, I'm like, I like that and it makes me happy. I probably will give this to someone for Mother's Day. I want to give this picture to someone for Mother's Day because I think mothers do a lot of hard things and I really appreciate that. I think I'm going to end up giving this picture to my grandmother. I drew a red-winged blackbird and she always really likes birds and water birds, so I think I'm going to give it to her. Oh, those are great. Yeah, it's so good, right? Okay, mine is also done. Let me see. That's great. Thank you. It puts you in a location that you're not able to visit right now. And also, people can identify with that. Like, you want to kind of share that with other people, and that's what art does. So, when you put yourself in a certain position, you're basically putting the viewer into the painting as well. And that yeah. way, they can relate. It's nice, it's a good job. Thank you. And my grandparents live there and this is their favorite pond. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna give this to my grandmother for Mother's Day. That's a great idea, especially because you can't get to the store these days. It's nice to make a little homemade gift. Plus, moms and grandmothers like those better anyway, right? Yeah, I usually do something that's sort of arts and crafty for Mother's Day. Yeah, they're always the best. Can I see yours? Yeah. Wow, it's so good. Oh, thanks, Rosie. That sunset, that light, in that moment really caught my eye. And so that's what I'm trying to recreate here, you know, it's something that really spoke to me. All right, to all the kids hanging out with us at home, keep going, take your time, and share with us when you're done. And thanks again to our creativity partner, Adobe. Don't forget, if you want to put all your drawings into a really cool portfolio, try Adobe Spark. It's a fun way to share memories with friends and family, and best of all, it's free. A few of you have already sent us your Spark portfolios, and we're really loving them. Here's one from our friends Josie and Viv. Remember to have your parents email us your Adobe Spark portfolios or pictures of your artwork, or share them on social media with the hashtag DrawPicture. Tell us what you want to draw next week, and you might be named Time for Kids Art Director of the Week. See you soon. Bye!